Mwakili wetu tulake kwa mwakili jalo mo untold stories with Rachel Sibinyani. Kwa pana njalo lena yo host Rachel Sibinyani. Humpeno rena lere Brandon Samson oi longo ring. Kutu longo ring saka pole loya khakwe. Let la khakulu kwa la jalo kwa nukwari. Kine kini seke nage tshalosa kwa re. We are going to bring somebody oi longo ring ukila anna jalo mo tenkhad death row. Kere Brandon ya kake tshalosi zi. Only lady mo khadi kana taro mo tenga sultan kote ba arabola na his experience mo kuyon. Arab Brandon, like this ba kasi right so kwa mo kile mo untold stories. Leo here, welcome to the viewers and everybody concerned. My name is Bilal Kahiso Brandon Samson. Muna wamho disha. Alhamdulillah. Hey. Some time back, in 2008, yeah, in 2008, I was sentenced to death by the court of law. Then I went and stayed there from 2008 until 2011 while waiting for the court of appeal processes. And my case was finalized. Ultimately, the, case, the, the court of appeal hearing was that happened in 2011 and the, the hearing upon when it happened the finalization was such that the death sentence that had been imposed on me was set aside and a custodial sentence of 20 years in prison was imposed of which by then i had already spent almost 11 years of that time so by then alhamdulillah after then uh, <clears throat> ultimately went to complete my sentence during community service and was ultimately released in 2013 and came to join the community and I've been a productive member of the society ever since then. Alhamdulillah, I thank everybody. Okay, um, but first I... I understand that uh, Brendan will go to time. You know, so can you take us back or once or Brendan Mimili, who are now in Zinjang, who are in Zinjang, you know. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Brendan, basically, I grew up uh, just an ordinary Kasi boy. Ah, school, Momo Horisani, staying with my parents, and Kafeta uh, School. Uh, I ultimately went to Kaya school, ngai tabo from one, two, three. Kwa wosia papi jo finalize Cambridge, go Harris Chile, and then after then, I remember then I got my first job in my life as a teacher. Kwa marang community junior. Oh. But yeah, I remember my first job in my one in this world was as a teacher. Kwa protest. I was just I was I was appointed by the by the Minister of Education. I think then it was in the eighties. There wasn't sufficient teachers. So upon completion of your Form 5, you, you qualified enough. So I, I was offered a temporary job as a teacher. And I became a teacher. After then, I left. After I left, I uh, ultimately went and... Out, well, as for ad 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 academic achievement, I only ultimately, uh, ultimately get to, got to study at the University of Nairobi in Kenya. And that's when I came to do a Bachelor of Commerce degree. And... Came, came to work, started working in South Africa, Botswana, and I worked primarily in the stock market industry. I worked at the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, and I also came over to Botswana to have a stint to the, to the Botswana Stock Exchange. After some time, uh, then, whilst I was working for the stock exchange in Johannesburg, that's when... I went to prison. That's when I got arrested. And it was during that time when we were coming from Joburg. We come to Botswana to visit one December. And then me and some other friends went to commit, decided to go and commit a crime. They wanted to go and do a robbery. I decided to join them. Not because I, I was inherently a bad boy or what. Okay, there were two South African boys we're going to do this and I just decided they, 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 actually initially they, they, 
they felt like, ah, when I'm on Swana, I'm on all of Khatlap, I'm on Swana, doesn't do this. So, you know, in my quest to try to prove that I'm not a coward, you know, I don't know the way that ego must have. And I, I only came to think about it when I was lying in a prison cell. And yes, just look at me. Yes, it's just to try and prove that I'm, uh, I have, I'm not a coward. Look whoa, 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 what I ended up uh, doing and what led to me being in, in custody. Because I just wanted to prove a point and proving a point, but that didn't make it right. It was a very wrong thing that I did. And, but uh, Alhamdulillah after then, and I repented, made by me, made tawba, and I repented and vowed never to engage in activities of that nature. And ever since I, after I gotten out of prison, I uh, continued on and never engaged in activities of that nature and just continued on living a good and honest life as a Muslim. Alhamdulillah, still back in Mokhoditani and I still on continued on living with the people and, well, people... Now this time, when I came from prison, sure, Alhamdulillah, they're still friendly. I'm still there, still their boy. I still stay with them. And, <clears throat> but it's just that, okay, somewhere along the line, I had become a Muslim. And okay. as, yeah. but, but I want to understand. So what you are basically saying is, Uno, Uno Osi, you were not a criminal at all. No. You were never um, engaged in criminal activities before no, you no, had never no i never engaged in criminal activities that was your before. first that is the first time <laughs> the first time i committed an offense okay can you take us to to that day yeah. um what happened how did you plan the whole thing what happened where did the incident take place the incident took place some place at some some people's place Apparently, these guys work for some people, Baba Chenjang, Chel at the station, and apparently these people are into foreign exchange trading at the, at the bus rank, at the Habrone bus rank. So basically what happens is we wanted to go and hit, uh, we, wanted, we wanted to go and attack them where they were staying at their residential area in Mkhodisan at some place. Somebody knew where they were staying. So we went to their house. And when we got there, it was three of us armed with uh, firearms, you know, I had a gun, I had two guns, my, had, my friend had a gun, he had a gun, we were, we were just three of us, we all, had, we all had more than two guns and knives in us. I had two guns and a knife, my friend had two guns, the other guy just had one gun. And then we got into that place, when we went there, initially we were to change money and then when we got there, the guy opened, whilst we were waiting, we went, whilst we were waiting for him to change the money, in the process we took out guns and then we, because we didn't come there to change money, we came there for a robbery. And then we did a robbery and then, you know, a robbery being a crime, crime has got, is not guaranteed, you know, you can never be guaranteed of whatever uh, desired, service, desired uh, result you can get from crime, you know. We went there planning to rob them. When we got there, we didn't plan that they will fight or what. And then there was a fight. There was, there was confrontation between us and those guys. And as a result, amen, we ended up shooting them. There was a serious shootout and both those guys were shot. And it was bloody and I grabbed my friend. Okay, and then there we only managed to steal just a small bit of money. Because we had come there initially wanting to steal $50,000. Because we knew that those guys had changed. We had come with a, I had come with a friend. We had changed $50,000 there. So we wanted the $50,000. So those guys refused with the, with the dollars. And they rather pulled out a trolley, a drawer, and say we must take the, the pullers and rents which are there, which is about 10,000 pullers and 8,000 rents. And... Oh. You are, you are saying there was a shootout. Yes. Did they also have had guns as well or Kiro Naba needed to control Lenos? Kiro Naba needed to control A shootout, okay, maybe it was one sided. We started uh, we started the shootout when they started fighting us because this other guy picked up something from the house. I don't know what it was a, a, a metal object or what. Uh, something like the reinforcing or something, some metal object. He picked up some metal object wanting to hit my friend and now I was sitting there and I was I couldn't just let them do that so I, sh I fired a shot at him and then Lynn and this guy when I was leaning down wanted to be looking at the the drawer which had money 
he attempted to hit me with something. So my friend also shot him. Okay. Shot the other guy. So you knew how to use a gun? Yes. How, how did you know how to use a gun? I was staying in South Africa. In South Africa, they have a, an indoor shooting range, my sister. You can just pay 150 rand. Okay. They go and teach you, even if you're not a soldier, they just go there and they teach you how to use a firearm, how to fire a gun, how to use it and the, the safety measures and everybody. And then where I had learned it from there. Okay. Yeah, because I, I, I used to... I used to be working in some broke, I, 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 in some building in Joburg, and below, I was working on the 10th floor, and on the 9th floor, there was an indoor shooting range, and it was only costing 150 rand, and then you just go and do it that, and it takes about an hour and a half to go and fire 150 rounds of bullets, their bullets, and then they show you, so I had learned from there, that's where, that's... Okay, so, um, when you planned this robbery, were you intending to shoot? Why carry guns? Why not maybe carry some metal to hit them with rather than guns? And when I tell you we were with a South African boy, you know, uh, when you do a robbery, I suppose, mm. you have to try and intimidate the, 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 the patrons. I think you have to try and intimidate them. So basically, I, always, I suppose the firearm was, the guns were basically to try and intimidate and to try and make your way out. If maybe you are cornered, you can shoot your way out to get away from the, 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 the scene. Or the main objective will be to use it to coerce or to intimidate the particular worker there to hand over the money. And in the process, when we were doing that, those guys, they, were, they must have been drinking because there were bottles of beer there in that place. So I think those guys must have been drinking because there was a serious fight. And in Nale Mzala, aish. and Mzala, uh, Mzala is a Kimusutu, you know, he, he's got theories. He says, Kase Sutu, Situnya house in Tsitsa trouble, how in Tsitsa it cannot just go back without firing. Mm -hmm. So he took out a gun, he had fired a shot, these guys were fighting. So we, fought, we shot at them. Oh, and okay. then after then, I told him, hey man, we shot some guys, let's go. And you know, stubborn South Africa, and he said, nah, 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 nah. we're fine, man, we stay. Now I say, let's run away to South Africa because we've killed people, man. Okay, so did you run? No, we didn't. You ran away? No, we didn't run. How, how, how long did it take for you to get caught? Uh, we did that on the, two days later, we were arrested in Sivina. Because after we left here, Mohawaron, we went to Sivina. Why we, did you go to Sivina? Uh, my cousin was having a party. My cousin is married in Sivina. So my cousin, they were having a party in Sivina. So we went to a party at my cousin's place, my cousin's husband's place in Sivina. So whilst we were there, the police came and arrested us and brought us from Sivina to Havaron. Come and answer for this because the one other friend, the one other friend we were with, Ironically, Artsamara Francis Town, he went to the cops and reported. Because what happened is when we came out of that place, like I'm saying, you know, crime has got no guarantee. Crime is such a worst thing you can ever think of. When we came out of that thing, when we came out of that thing, mm. uh, he expected us to come with US dollars. When we were telling him, those guys refused Gamaji, they refused with the dollars. So he thought we were vibing him. Because you know that's how criminals think like they're selfish, egotistic people. A criminal is basically a selfish, egotistic person. Mm -hmm. So now we come and we tell this guy, ah, there's no US dollars. Ah, I'm gonna hit people three, four, five shots were fired there. Uh, no, I, I, I want to understand here. Yeah. How long did the trial take? The trial took almost four years. Yeah. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, yeah. It took almost four years. It took, yeah, the trial. No, no. The trial. Hey, the trial started in two thousand and two. Oh. Yeah. The trial started in two thousand two. Hey, when it completed in two thousand and eleven, it took almost nine years. So you pleaded not guilty to. Yeah, the I pleaded offense. not guilty to the offense. Why did you plead not guilty? Ah, it was my lawyer's instruction, and now nah, I just followed. It said, <laughs> not guilty, and then I felt ah, not guilty. But did you feel you were not guilty at the time? Well, uh, by the time the trial came, you know, 
had already made peace with everything and now individually i had forgot i had forgiven those people that i had offended and i'd ask god to forgive me and i asked them to forgive me in way as well so by then uh, now by the time the trial completed i was at peace with myself okay to accept whatever would have been the outcome okay so during the commission of the crime how many were you again uh it was three of us it was me and yeah it was four of us me and two southern me and a south african and another Mutsana boy me and two south africans and a Mutsana boy okay so all the four of you yeah. you ended up um, being sentenced to death yeah only three only two oh. yeah, this, yeah only two were sentenced to death the other two Ah, they left them. Okay, so the two killed Nabai Longhorin, you fired. Yeah, me and myself. Yeah. Okay, now you got sentenced to death, right? So it means you are being taken to the maximum prison, Gogo Central. Yeah. Oil Longhorin, Wako Tangwa, or Death Row. Yeah. Can you take us through that day when the judge was saying? <laughs> Uh, Brandon, you are being sentenced to death, or oh, you will hang by the neck until you die. How, how did you feel? <laughs> Alhamdulillah, because you know, this thing, when it happens, by the time they get to tell you that, you've already known and I'd already prepared myself psychologically for that, for that, and well, had it not been to tell the honest truth, had it not been my lawyer, had it not been my lawyer, had it not been my lawyer, that's what I, I was telling myself, I'm just going to please myself, I'm just insulting him, I'll just do something, I'll just insult I was telling myself, I'll just insult him. And I made a mistake of telling my co-accuser, and then before we did that, he told him, hey, this guy, and then, I, then he told me that, no, 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 don't, I'm just, so when the guy came and he read the sentence, I was torn apart, okay, listening to my lawyer and my conscience, but I wanted to please myself. I, so I decided to keep quiet. But deep, in, uh, deep inside, I had already known, what, okay, if this, this, he's going to say this, and well, Alhamdulillah, if this is what has to happen. Man, there's nothing I can do. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Now, I took it with a smile. I mean, even when I went back to prison, I mean, now, when you are, you see, death row in prison, it's a separate section of prison. You know, uh, yes, it's, it's inside prison. Now, there it is a confined, it's a different section. Not everybody can walk, can walk in there. Once you're sentenced to death, it's only you who walk, who gets in there. Other people are not allowed, except maybe a guy who's coming to clean or whatever. Okay. Yeah, a guy can come and clean or guys from the church or whatever. Lin na now. I'm in the process. I want to go and talk to other death row inmates there. I want to go and talk to them. When you 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 got into death row, right? Popularly, popularly known as Sultan. Yeah. How many inmates did you find there? Jerry, this is Jerry Mukwena. Jerry Mukwena, Yeah, I found three guys there. You found? Only good. Yeah, and I came with two. We were two. Mm. So we found three guys. Okay. Yeah. So can you describe for us for the cell? Ibutuna bukai in the jang aili fifi or ili seidi ikananga. It's maybe not not so big. I don't I don't know if the government didn't expect to hang so many people or or sentence so many, but it's not. Okay, it's not so, so, so spacious, but uh, maybe a normal, an ordinary room, fella, an ordinary room, mm -hmm. not a big, big, and just an ordinary. And then uh, it didn't have a toilet. When we got there, it didn't have a toilet. Botswana government has been abusing death row inmates from 1966 until in 2009. Until you guys got there. Yeah, until we got there. Because when we got there in 2008, we came to realize that Mobotswana on, on death row, 
uh, they, when they when they close, you see, you have a toilet and a shower and stuff like that. But when they when they, when they close the place up for 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 for, 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 for the night, mm. the toilet was closed outside. Mm -hmm. So inside that place, they used to bring you a twenty liter bucket. So when we found that 20 liter bucket, now I asked them where is it written in the constitution of Botswana that I must use that because... Or even on the prison act. We then, when we got there, what I came to realize or Botswana, I think from 1966 until 2008, a lot of people who used to go to, who were sent, who commit crime and end up sent, being sentenced to death mm. were either illiterate or if they were illiterate, they were they were submissive or they were violent. There was one soldier boy, Tiko, he's a famous guy. He was he was once on death row, they hanged him there. He said, mm. uh, him he believed in violence. The day they wanted to he fought them, he wanted to beat them up. But you don't use violence. Violence is not the best solution. You know? So but basically we did now now when we got there, we just basically said, okay. Now I'm asking for the prison act. They give us the prison act. I took the prison act. I read all because what when we what we came to realize is on, on in Botswana when you get on death row they take your boxer shorts. I mean, where is it written that an inmate on death row should not put on the boxer shorts? It's not written nowhere. So if they're doing it, it's, it's illegal. So now we took it and we looked at it and say, ah, Karna the boxer shot. Where is it written in this prison act? I give this prison act. It is the prison. It is the act. It is a government act that is regulating prisoners who are here in your institution. Sure. Yeah. So now, where is it written here that this should be the case? And then, where is it written? All the things that they were doing that were not written there. Where is it written? And uh, this is inhuman. Minister of uh, Justice, Defense and Security. And then, he was the minister. He once came there and we asked him, Ra, where now? Do you badisha bahau umurakin? Do they use a, a, a bucket? Akiriba goes quick. And Rona, how do you expect us to do this? So Rona, when we got there, we told them or harina hujaji jo until they we called Jumawak and we told him Jumawak over and this is the setup. Or hari linting hamebra akona toilet. When they close us up at night, we, we have to use a twenty liter bucket and that's inhuman. That's unconstitutional. That's, that's very wrong. I don't think our, our government should be doing that. Section 7 of the, of the Bujana Constitution says no person shall be, shall be exposed to inhuman or degrading treatment. Now, why should you subject an, a death row inmate to, to this kind of treatment? So when we started questioning that, they said, no, 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 you shouldn't. Hey, there's no, they started trying to give us stories, uh, bureaucratic uh, excuses and escapist uh, stories. And then we said, okay, no big deal. Alhamdulillah. You, then what you're going to do is you keep your food and we keep ourselves because where, where are we after if we eat the food, where are we going to, to, to relieve ourselves? No way. You went on a hunger strike. You went on a hunger strike. Mm. And it came out. Some lady from Gazette, yeah, got it from the mobile phone. And he came and wrote about it. The Queen. There was another lady. And she's an online editor. Yeah. Queen. Yeah, I think. Then she came and then the Jumabako gave her a story. After then, the government even took the story. But before then, after then, another place. Then they did the reconstruction. That is when in 2009, from 2009 until today, remote 2023, the government of Botswana is still hanging people presently on death row, about seven inmates. Mm. Apparently, I was made to understand there are seven. Mm. They hanged two boys, two more boys some time back. And you know, those poor boys, and you know, Alhamdulillah, you know, people. Yes, I'm not disputing it. A person, but you know, you never find a, a, a repetitive. We've never had a serial killer here in Botswana, or we've never had a repetitive murderer. He murders and he goes out, but we have a repetitive uh, a housebreaker, yeah. a repetitive burglar, a repetitive rapist, you know, a repetitive abuser. Yes, that we have. A child molester, that we have. 
but we don't have a repetitive murder this boy murders we have never had that unless if we were to uh, i think that's we, we actually have you know we have there's a case i'm going to attend next week apparently he has killed four people now but let's let's get into this one i i want to understand is cell 10 dark or there's light no there's light it's just you know, like a the normal it's just a normal prison cell okay it's not it's not yeah it's, it's a normal prison cell the only prison cell the only place in prison which is uh, painted differently is the isolation cell where they put you if you do something to offend them in prison that's when they take you to a certain place they call it a dark hole it's painted black is it the solitary confinement, it's solitary, confinement. Mm -hmm. solitary confinement yeah, it's, it's the only place that is painted black okay. and when it's painted black they do it like this when they take you there they cut also your meals okay. you don't you know you see so how do you okay with the with the with the rest of the prison population the other guys they i i believe they can go out you know you buy lankore le mosel 10 literally like i you know go nowhere luna ba le mosel 10 you just sit there and just do nothing the only time you go out kha tsa ma wat cleaning or going to the visit you know you go to a visit maybe but so go na ba khona hore ba tle ba tle go check and you know Death row can be so comical, you know. There was one old man, Ogomulepole Mukwena. Mukwena, they hanged him. It was the first time I saw uh, I saw a person being hanged. Was that nice old man? Somewhere for Francis Town. And Mukwena used to make me laugh. You know, when he comes from the visit, he would say, Hey, Mukwena, where's your king? Hey, what's your king? I'm going to go to the king. I'm going to go to the king. Namungali so hagili. You know, but where's in Bangali so bal? Namungali so hagili. You know, it's so funny. You know, oh, really? Yeah. Mukwena so. What you? Ah, where's in where's in Mukwena? Can you get your passport? Let me keep holding on. Mela. Ah, what class is your Mukwena? But the day they came to take that old man because we were like five, then it means you know, agree your sentence to death, and then you wait for the court of appeal. The court of appeal comes, and then once the court of appeal affirms confirms your send your 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 death sentence then they're going to hang you 